lectures. Once again, welcome back to our uh, online teaching and learning of the Word of God. And this afternoon, we are going to discuss about overcoming weaknesses in our life. There are lots of Christians that uh, some, sometimes they could not come back on their uh, spiritual life. And some of them are having some difficulties in you know, overcoming the weaknesses. How do we really overcome the weaknesses? How is the work of God will do His part regarding overcoming weaknesses? Let us read in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 and the following verses. Myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent, am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Walk in the flesh, we do not war the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through to God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let us pray, Father, as we are going to study your word, let the Holy Spirit be the one to minister to this word. And I pray that this word will become a seed into the hearts of each and every Christian that are having some difficulties in overcoming the weaknesses in their life. Father, it's not by our view, it's not by our own effort, it's not by our own, own righteousness, but it is the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, in our life that will bring us to overcome our weaknesses in life. Thank you, Father. Be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, I'm telling you, no, no Christians, not even leaders or pastors or ministers or bishops or bishops could tell that they don't have weaknesses in their life. Each and every individual have their own weaknesses. Even Paul have his own weaknesses. This is the thorn in the flesh. Now this, this topic of overcoming weaknesses in life is a very long series topic. In order, to, in order to fully comprehend on how to overcome our weaknesses in ourselves when it comes to dealing in our daily life. Some of the Christians are really having struggles, they are struggling in order, in order to overcome these weaknesses in their life. And I'm going to tell you the truth. As long as you will do it on your own, you will never succeed you will fail because there's nothing good that we could find in our flesh but there is a way in order to overcome weaknesses many people they already decided that I will not do these things I will follow these things I will uh, obey these things so they have already decided in their mind according to their will according to their understanding they decided it to do it, to follow it. But the truth is, if it is not by the grace of God, if it is not by the mercies of God, and if it is not by faith, that will fail. That will fail. Because I'm going to tell you that this things cannot be done through human effort. It only can be done through the power of the Holy Spirit 
in our life. So let us start by studying what's the background of Corinthians. Okay? In Corinthians, that is in Achaia, Macedonia, when uh, we are studying about the book of Acts, we have learned that Paul went to Philippi, he went to uh, Berea, Thessalonica, he went to Athens, and he went to Corinth. And this area, there are lots of Greek philosophers in that area. And that is the reason why uh, Paul is addressing it to the Corinthians because there is an issue to the Corinthians. There is an issue to the Corinthians. And for the Jews, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, he is addressing to the Jews and the Greeks in Corinthians because he is addressing it in the synagogue. He is addressing it in the synagogue wherein there is a Jewish Christians and also there are Gentiles Christians. Okay, so let me tell you one thing. The nature of the Jews, they always seek sign. Even they ask the Lord Jesus Christ, what sign you can give, it, give us that you are the Son of God? But Jesus Christ replied, there is no sign that will be given to you except for Jonas that he was being three days and three nights at the belly of the whale. So Jews always seek sign. That is the nature of the Jews. But for the Greeks in Corinthians, they always seek wisdom. And the other thing is there is a division in Corinthians. There is for Apollos, there is for Cyphas, there, for, there is for, for Paul. So they are having division when it comes to, to, to believe. Okay? They are having strife. I am for Apollos. I am for Cephas. So that is happening in Corinthians. And of course, there is sin that is being tolerated inside the church in Corinth. And that is the reason why Paul is addressing them regarding this uh, uh, subject of our mind to the, to, to the obedience of Christ. Objectivity of our mind to the obedience of Christ. We have to identify the root cause of the problem in order to find the solution of our problem. Because if you are going to find of the problem without identifying the cause or the real cause of the problem, you are giving a temporal solution to the problem. But God knows our heart. He knows deep inside our heart what is the real problem. Now, the number one thing that you have to identify in order, in order to overcome the weaknesses in your life is the very nature of our righteousness is not earned. As a human being, we tend to be righteous. We tend to do good things. We tend to be good. Because that is a... A, a, a human thing to do. That is what we call humanity. So every people in the world, they are tend to do good things, good works, righteousness. Now when it comes to overcoming of weaknesses, it is not earned. It is not earned. Our righteousness is not earned. It is not according to your works. Uh, I hope I could really explain to you these things properly in order for you to understand. The very nature of our righteousness in life is not earned. If you always think that you do things that is right, if you do things that is correct, if you do things that is in good deeds, and you find yourself as in good because of that. I'm sorry to tell you, church, you are still in in accordance or in the pattern of this world. Because that is the same mentality also of this world. All of the, even a different religion, they always tell you to do good things. Always do good things, always do good things. 
So if all the religion is telling you do the good thing, so what makes the difference as a Christian? If we are telling also to do only good things. Because God is teaching us much, much higher or beyond than just doing good things. The best is always hindered by the good. The good hinders the best. In order to come out what is the best in our life, then sometimes you have to remove the good things in your life. If you are satisfied in your life, if you are okay in your life, and you don't want to, to, to succeed more in your life, then there will be no best thing that will come to you. Because you are already in complacency. You are already uh, in your comfort zone. You are already okay in your life. So you can never experience the best thing in your life because you are being hindered by the good things in your life. And the very nature of our righteousness, if you are going to understand that once you do good things, it's not because of it's not because uh, you want it. Church, the reason, the very nature of our righteousness is because of Christ. There is a two deep, big difference between uh, doing good things for the sake of humanity or doing righteousness because of Christ inside our hearts. Let us continue and learn deeper regarding this things. As mentioned in verse 1, I, Paul, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Paul, when he is addressing to the Corinth, he is addressing them with meekness and gentleness. But that meekness and gentleness, that goodness, is not according to his own effort. It is the meekness and gentleness of whom? Of Christ that is living inside Paul. So the reason why he was able uh, to do meekness and gentleness to each and every one of them is not because of his own effort but because of Christ inside Paul. So the very nature of our righteousness is not earned. Paul did not recognize that meekness and gentleness in his life is according to his own effort or according to his own will or according to his own decision. But he knows that the meekness and gentleness in his life is through Christ. It is of Christ. So, number one, you have to understand to overcome weakness, it's not about you. It's not about you and what you can do. But it is all about of Christ. It is all about Him. So if you would like to overcome weakness in your life, weaknesses in your life, don't think that you are the one who is going to solve this. I'm telling you, you will fail. The second thing is, you have to differentiate God's righteousness to man's righteousness. As I have told you a while ago, there is a righteousness of man and there is also a righteousness of God. In his verse, second of Second Corinthians chapter 10, But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. So when we do something of the righteousness of God, some people, they might think that you are already boasting because of that. Because the righteousness of God is not the righteousness of man. And the righteousness of man is not the righteousness of God. Doing good things, it doesn't mean that you are doing the will of God. Doing the right things, it doesn't mean that you are already in the righteousness of God. Righteousness of God is actually doing the will of God. If you are doing good things, if you are doing good things apart from the will of God, that's not yet the righteousness of God. Righteousness of God is subjecting your will 
your mind, your thought in obedience to Christ's mind, to Christ's thought, to Christ's ways, and to Christ's ideas. And that is the righteousness. So, if we are doing something, never think or never compare what you are doing to other people. He who compares himself is not wise, according to Corinthians also, or, or the Epistles of Paul. He who compares himself is not wise. So if you always compare yourself to another person, you are making yourself in difficult situations. Why? The righteousness cannot be compared to other person. The righteousness of God that is in you cannot be compared to other person because the righteousness of God is beyond all righteousness in this world. Beyond, much, much more and beyond than the righteousness of this world. So, if we are doing the righteousness of God, and sometimes Paul was misinterpreted or misunderstood that doing the righteousness of God as if they thought that he was walking in the flesh because of his zealousness, because of his boastfulness in zealousness for the word of God, for staying in the truth, for clinging on the truth. Because what will happen is, if you are going to stand on the truth, so many people will be you will be clashing with so many people because you tend to break what they have known that is right. So what they have believed. So what uh, they, they will think that uh, what they have believed, that what they have known that is right, they say that is the right thing. There are lots of things in this world that the people think that is right. But actually, it is wrong in the sight of God. Let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. Because not all things that is right is pleasing to the Lord. Only God knows what is right, the righteousness in His sight. So whatever it is, church, whatever it is, my brothers and sisters, knowing the will of God, subjecting your mind, emotion, and will to the will of God. That is one part of overcoming your weakness in life. But the problem is how we are going to submit our mind, emotions, and will to God. That is the question. How we are going to submit. As Paul said, recognize our weaknesses. God could not work in your life if you will not humble yourself. People always think, it's okay because other Christian brothers or sisters, they are doing it, so it's also fine. So if other people are doing it, so you will think it is also considered as okay. When I was starting as a minister, some of my co-ministers, they are doing things that is not pleasing in the sight of God. Then I thought to myself, okay, they are doing it, so maybe that is okay. No, it's not okay. Either you remain standing alone for the truth, you remain standing alone for the truth. That's why Paul was very bold when of his boldness, people misinterpreted is as boastfulness in his part. That as if he was walking in the flesh because he was being, being boastful of his zealousness for the word of God, for, for explaining the truth, the gospel. Because Paul has so many enemies. And one of his major enemies are the Jewish Christians. Why? Because these Jewish Christians, they are telling Paul's gospel is incomplete. What Paul is teaching is not complete. You have to be circumcised. You have to follow the law of Moses in order to complete your salvation. And Paul was very angry because of that. 
because Paul received a special revelation from God that a man will have his salvation by the grace of God through faith alone and not of any laws, not of any traditions, not of any rituals, not of any other things, but by the grace and faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if if you would like to overcome your, your, your weakness in life, first, also, you have to recognize what it is. What are your weaknesses in life? You cannot tell me that you don't have weaknesses. All the people in the world, they have their own weaknesses. And some people, they already recognize their weaknesses. Okay? Whatever things that hinders you to God, that is weakness. Why you cannot serve Him? Why you cannot give to the Lord? Why you cannot obey Him? There are so many whys why you cannot do things according to the will of God. And that is what we call weaknesses. Because the, the worldly and the fleshly desire is higher than the desire of the spiritual things. So church, we must recognize and we must humble ourselves when it comes to our weaknesses. I, I have known myself also. I have seen myself and I recognize my weaknesses in my life. And during my weaknesses, I humble myself. According to the book of James, submit yourself therefore unto the Lord. Humble yourself. Resist the devil and he will flee. The devil will not just simply resist because of your command, but because you humble yourself before the Lord and that the Lord will be the one to take action for that. When I am praying right now, I'm not praying. Before, when I was praying, I was praying that, Lord, I will do this. I will follow you. I will be obedient to you. I will do it according to my own effort. When I am doing that in my life previously, that's the time I always fail. Because I recognize myself strong. I recognize myself that I could do it. I recognize myself that I have a strong will. But God showed to me that that is also my weakness. Being proud, being uh, uh, mind loof means uh, bloated mind. And that is also weaknesses in life. And not recognizing your weakness or your sin or whatsoever in your life, God cannot take action for that. Because he who humbled himself, God will raise him up. But he who exalted himself, God will put him down. So in order to overcome your weakness, you have to recognize, you have to identify, and submit in full humility your weakness to God. And now when I am praying, it's totally the opposite of what I am praying before. When I feel something to do things, I am praying to God. I am humbling myself. Father, uh, give me strength in order to overcome these things. You know, th this is my weaknesses in my life. And I cannot do it alone. I need you to be my strength. And when I pray that kind of prayer, you know what happened? God is working on that. It's not me anymore that overcomes the weaknesses in life, but it is the power of God that overcomes my weaknesses in life. So that is a big difference. That's why he mentioned, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. So many people, that's the reason why they could not overcome their weaknesses in life because they are making war of their flesh. We know that flesh is weak. The flesh is always weak and it is always weak. Even our Lord, when He was in the flesh, the flesh is weak. But God has given Him the power to overcome. That's why be of good cheer, He's telling us. Be of good cheer 
my church or my people because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the flesh. When Paul is telling that walk in the flesh, if we walk in the flesh, does it mean that we are already sinning? Because Jesus Christ walked also in the flesh. See, this is totally, I mean, it's, uh, you have to read and understand the verse and the, the word in the Bible. Walking in the flesh is not a sin, okay? But if you walk after the flesh, that is a sin. Here in life, we are walking in flesh. Because we are still in the body, we are this in, the, in this weakness, the weaknesses in our body, the weaknesses of flesh. So we are walking in flesh. But it doesn't mean if you are walking in flesh, you are already a sinner. No. But if you walk after the flesh, not after the spirit, and that's the time you are living in sin or walking in sin. Because you crave, you walk after the flesh. That is a two different things for a true Christians. A true Christians, when they are after the flesh, the Holy Spirit will always convict them that you should not be after the flesh, but you should be after of the Holy Spirit. After of the Spirit of God. There are lots of questions in Christian life. There are lots of Christians that have been Christians for five years, ten years, 15 years, 20 years, but we could not see walking in the Spirit because they always make war in the flesh. Making war in the flesh, you cannot overcome that. You cannot overcome that uh, making war in the flesh because Paul said, Paul said that our weapons are mighty, are not carnal. For our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling pull down someone. So, let's go back to number four. So, if you know your weakness, if you differentiate the, the, the righteousness of God and the righteousness of man, so knowing God's righteousness and identifying our weaknesses, is true by his is true God by his word. How can you tell me that this is the righteousness of God and this is the righteousness of man? If you don't know the word of God, if you are not studying the word of God, if you are not uh, meditating the word of God, because the word of God that is the attitude, personality, attributes of our Lord. So how can you tell me which is the righteousness of God and which is the righteousness of man if you are not grounded by the word of God? And how can you say your weaknesses in life? When, church, when I started Ephesians, my mindset is based on the pattern of this word. This is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. This is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. This is the right thing, this is the wrong thing. Because that was had been taught by my elders, by the people, by the school, by the church, by by uh, by the uh, relatives, the people around me. This is what they are telling me. Knowing what is good and what is evil, you should do good and you should not do evil. That is what I have learned from the pattern of this world. So if I am not doing any evil, I am good. I am okay. Because that is the pattern of this world. But that is not according to the word of God. How can you know your weakness in life? How can you say that the good things you're really doing is really good? If you have not known the goodness of God. So where can you find the goodness and the righteousness? The true goodness and the true righteousness. It is only through the word of God. Studying the word of God is very important 
eternal life. You cannot grow in your faith simply by worshiping. You cannot grow in your faith simply by praying. But you can grow in your faith by studying the Word of God. Because your worship and even your prayer is based on the Spirit and in truth. Because God is a Spirit. Those who will worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. And the Spirit will give life to the words that you are speaking when you have the Word of God in your heart. So if the word that is coming out from your mouth are those scriptures, are those words that is coming from the Word of God, that is coming out from your mouth, and that Spirit will give life to that. And when you pray, it will be powerful. Why? Because you know you are praying not against the will of God, but you are praying the will of God. No matter you you cry in blood, no matter you you walk from the entrance of the gate of the church, going to the altar on your knees, God will not answer your prayer if it is not His will. But if you know that once you pray, that it is His will. Church, I'm telling you, not even the, the enemy of this world, the prince of the air of this world, can overcome that. Why? Because my God is all-powerful. That's why when we are worried of, of the flesh, with our flesh, there's no victory over that. Because in order to identify on how to win the war you must know your weapon and the weapon is the word of God it is only the word of God of all the armor of God it is only the word of God is the weapon the weapon to attack the enemy to attack the weaknesses in your life so in knowing God's righteousness and knowing your weaknesses in life can be done through the Word of God. As mentioned in His Word, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, Paul is telling to them that when we walk in the flesh, we don't war in the flesh because the weapons that we are making a weapons of our warfare is not the flesh, it's not the carnal. Because if you are fighting with the flesh, with the flesh, no one, no one will win. But it is the mighty, it is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So the weaknesses, which is our flesh, okay, it is done mightily through God. How He will do it? By pulling down of strongholds. The reason why people are not able to overcome the weaknesses in their life because the strongholds in their mindset is very, very strong. They believe on something that they did not, they don't want to accept the Word of God but still believe on what they would like to believe. We have the power to believe on what we would like to believe. And we have the power to reject and not to accept the Word of God. And in order to, to make war with our flesh, and we will walk according to the will of God, according to the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, it must be mighty through God to the pulling down of the stronghold. Our weaknesses in life are the strongholds we hold and bring it captivity to the obedience of Christ. So the weaknesses in our life that we are having as a Christians, these are the strongholds in our mind. The desire of our mind, it is only in our mind. And we must bring it down to the captivity to Christ in order to obey Him. So, 
the thing that we need to do in order to overcome our weakness in life is lay it down to the Father. Bring it down to the Father. Submit it to the Father. And recognize and tell it to yourself that you cannot do it. You cannot make war on it. Because it's only through mighty, mighty of God, mighty through God. And He is the one who is going to pull it down. The strongholds in our life is the imaginations in our mind. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that is the strongholds in our life. So all these things that has been fed in our mind, all these things that has been endured, those um, pleasure that has been injected in our mind, those are the strongholds in our life. When I am trying to study the life of a person, I'm trying to observe the life of the person, people nowadays are becoming lazy and lazy and lazy and more lazy and lazy. Why? Because the world, the innovation of this world, is teaching these people to be lazy. There's a time uh, in the old times, maybe in 70s, 60s, something like that, in, in, in our country, here in the our country, the Philippines, you have to do everything manually. Even going to the other place, you have to walk. Even when we are going to school and coming back home, we are, we are walking. When we are going to, to cook our food, it's not automatic. You have to make fire by the wood. So if you need to drink water, you have to uh, go to the water pump and then get water. So everything during those lives are manual. Okay. But when these things have been introduced to the world, it introduces comfort, it introduces uh, easy things for a person, for a life. So, I'm not saying that this is not the right thing or the good thing, but that is the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your life. But if these things will be the reason for you to become lazy, and that you have to deal with it. That's why I'm telling you, if you would like to know what is the righteousness of God, the goodness of God, then go back to Him, submit to Him. If these imaginations and if these strongholds will be held captivity, means we, we pull down these strongholds, then that's the time you can overcome the weaknesses because it is now the power of God will take action and that power of God will lead you to obedience to Christ. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Even you are doing things, but if your intention of the heart is evil, do you think that is good? Of course not. That's why the Word of God will be the one to convict you by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you read the Word, it's already learning the process. It is only processing your mind. It is like it is only a logos. You 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 learn it. You 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 get it. You you understand it. But putting life to that word, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. If I'm speaking to you right now, I'm speaking only the logos. I'm speaking only the word. But when the Holy Spirit going to speak to you directly to your heart, 
that word which I have spoken to you, the Holy Spirit gives them life. And that makes it weak, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So, the Word of God is very important for us. There are lots of Christians, so many Christians. They are what we call the Sunday Christians. I, I, I rebuke them with love and I ask them to repent. A true Christian will hunger and thirst for his word. When you invite these Christians to tell them, we are going to study the word, but they will make so many excuses. That makes me a big question mark. Because when I have faith, when I believe in Christ with all my heart, with all my soul, my spirit hungers for the word of God. And the longer or the deeper I study the Word of God, the deeper I know that I don't have any knowledge in Him. It's the more I know Him, the more I recognize myself that is nothing. That's why when, when I am studying the Word of God, the more that I could see myself that I am nothing. It is all by the power of God. And then in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, And be not confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is pulling down the strongholds, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That you may prove. So how can you prove? If you are not subjecting yourself to the study of the Word of God. Church, we have lots of learnings of the Word of God. Even I, I always study the Word of God. And every time I study the Word of God, there is something new that is coming in my ways. Something new that is coming in my mind. Truly, as as. As John said, even if we write all the things that Jesus Christ has done in this world, this whole earth will be not enough in order to feel the goodness of God. Church, we need to, to, uh, to have hunger and thirst for His Word in order to identify the goodness of God and to identify the weaknesses of our life and order once we have identified that then we are going to subject it to the will of God we will going to lay it down to the will of God we are going to give it up to the Father because it's only through Him that can pull down these strongholds by His Word so when we are studying the Word of God we are feeding our mind and when we are feeding our mind, the Holy Spirit will give quicken, will give life to that word. And this is the verse and with you uh, from the book of John. Jesus Christ said, Why do you not understand my speech? Jesus Christ is speaking to the Jewish Pharisees. Even because you cannot hear my word. So many Christians they could not understand the Word of God because the truth is they are not hearing the Word. They are hearing it through flesh, but spiritually they are not hearing it. And he continually said in John chapter 8 verse 47, He that is of God hears the God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. Church, I would like to remind you if you are not hearing the Word of God and you cannot understand the Word of God, it only means one thing. Examine yourselves. Are you God's property? Are you really in God? If you cannot, if the Word that I'm speaking to you will not affect you or 
you cannot receive any life to the world, then there's a big problem. Maybe you are not of God. Then examine yourself. Examine your faith. It doesn't mean that you go to the church, you are saved. It doesn't, uh, it does not conclude that one. Faith is by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him as a well of water springing life. And Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In order to overcome your weakness in life, you have to feed your soul properly. Because our weapons are not carnal. It's not carnal. It is in our mind, in our emotion, in our will. The battle is in the mind. The battle is in our emotion. The battle is in our will. Now, how to win the battle? By feeding your mind with the right things. What you fed in your mind, that you will become. Because according to the Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you are feeding your, your mind with the things of this world, how can you expect me you do the spiritual things? But if you do things that is the Word of God, you are feeding it in your mind, putting it in your mind, Feeding it, your soul, the bread of life, and the water of the, the living water, then you will become strong in the sight of the Lord. I have come to know all of this because of the study of the Word. I have learned all of this because of the study of the Word. I'm speaking also to the other preachers or to other ministers that I'm encouraging you when you are going to preach or to speak or to teach, do it directly from the Word, not by searching the internet and finding things that will suit to your mind or to your teachings. It should come out from the Word. Sometimes that, that's the reason why it is misled because they are quoting from verse to another verse, quoting verse to another verse, and putting it to the things that they would like to explain to the people. That's not so. You have to read it according to its context. So, I'm going back, church. In order to overcome your flesh or overcome your weaknesses in life, and you will not become after the flesh, but after the Holy Spirit, you must feed your soul with the bread of life. Who is the bread of life? Jesus. You must uh, give yourself water, the living water. And who is the living water? Jesus Christ. And remember what he said here. If you believe in him, you will not thirst. But if you come to him, you will never hunger. So, first you have to believe. Uh, no, first you have to come and then believe. That's why when we would like to overcome the weaknesses in our life, you have to come and humble yourselves before the Lord and then believe that God can do something in your life to overcome it. Not according to your own, but according to the mighty, uh, to the power of God. His spirit to pull down the strongholds in your life. The church, let the Holy Spirit be the one to speak to you regarding the word and let this word be quickened in your heart. Let us pray. 
Father, thank you very much for this afternoon. I know this is a very long topic to discuss regarding overcoming Jesus. And I have only touched only the tip of the iceberg. But I know, Father, it is the Holy Spirit that will be the one to teach them and to guide them in the A while ago, while we are worshiping, Father, you, you led us in doing an online teaching so that it will be recorded so people can be reminded always Father, you are so gracious, you are so merciful because you are doing everything for us. You are making everything ready for us. But the problem is because everything is there, people don't mind, they don't care. And even you have allowed this pandemic happen in this world. You allowed it so that people will have time to listen to you, to your word. But again, they walk after the flesh, not after the spirit. Father, I pray that let their heart and soul and mind with hunger and thirst for your word. They must believe in you. They must trust in you that you can do things far better and beyond and what if people can imagine in their life. It is not according to our works. It is not our works, but it is according to your mighty power through your Holy Spirit that it can be done and it can be overcome. And by that, no one will be recognize except you no one will be glorified except you because we were able to overcome the world not because of our own effort but because of your mercy and love through your word and through your Holy Spirit we thank you Father we give you glory, honor and praises through your Son Jesus Christ Amen Amen Thank you very much. I hope you have uh, you have fed yourself with the word of God and continually nourish your soul and your spirit with the word of God because that is only the food of the soul and the spirit. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that we see in our God. Shalom everyone. May the Lord be with you on this coming week.